If we really want to understand what is going on during printing, we need to read the data from actual printing. I was finally able to measure the real pressure inside a hot end while printing. In this episode, we will see how I managed to do that. I know, I know. You guys were expecting to see a new contestant getting stressed on the Olympic test rig, but not just yet. Be reassured though, this work we're going to see today will ensure a much faster progression through these Olympics. Many of you, including myself, felt short about tracing the pressure behavior from a mid-air extrusion. Although it allowed us to see a few things, it was not fully representative of a real-life situation. Well, guess what? We have now a mean to measure the pressure inside the hot end during printing. As mentioned in the introduction video, the challenge I had was to find a way to isolate the pressure sensor from being affected by the vibrations and movements of the print head during printing. After taking a step back and giving this a good thought, the light bulb went on when I looked at my FL Sun Speed Racer sitting right next to my Hivort. Bingo! Bowden. So I rushed to the computer and came up with a design that would allow the extruder to transfer its pushing force to the pressure sensor. All of this without being bothered by the print head swinging around. Using my Himera as the extruder for this setup will ensure we have plenty of pushing force to overcome any additional drag this system might bring in. I mounted the extruder on a very rigid bracket that will act as a lever to translate the extruder pushing force to the pressure sensor. This lever is obviously mounted using some bearings to limit the system's friction. Some of you may say that I had something else in mind when designing that part, but nevertheless, it turned out to be a very strong part that would allow me to finally deliver and give birth to these Olympics. Combining the same rotary encoder from the bench test rig will allow us to get both pressure and volume readings in a very accurate manner, just like we did before. I then replaced my direct drive Hexadort by a small and simple Bowden hot end adapter that I created to fit directly my print head. I will make a different one for each contestant of these Olympics. Going back to Bowden made me realize a lot of things about nozzle pressure stability. I will probably cover this into another sidebar video, but for now let's look at the installation. The adapter will receive the filament via the Bowden tube. In order to keep the system as reactive and responsive as possible, I am using a Capricorn XS PTFE tube. This tube has an internal diameter of 1.9 mm, and I kept the tube as short as possible for the installation. This new data acquisition system surely has more inherent drag than the previous installation. I was able to measure this drag by recording pressure data from a dry run with no hot end installed. Simulating the entire print head path over the test print profile allowed me to measure the friction from the deforming PTFU tube, the spool rotation, and the encoder restriction. The average value of this run will be subtracted from every data point during the Olympics. I am fully aware that additional pressure in the hot end will generate more friction in the PTFU tube because the filament will rub harder in it. But this is the most accurate evaluation we can do at this point. The exact pressure on the filament is obtained by calculating the lever distances and applying their impact on the pressure sensor's reading. A few tweaks to the test print design and some more clipper magic to manage flow incrementation automatically and we're good to go. Using the same PLA filament from the first episode, we can now compare the pressure profiles of a mid-air extrusion to a real printing situation. Looking at the results from 220 degrees Celsius seems to confirm my previous assumptions. A higher overall pressure due to the printed part partially obstructing the nozzle, but then at the end, the pressure creep seems to be smoother. This could be that the filament is getting pulled out of the nozzle by the part grabbing onto it, or perhaps the PTFE tube is stretching a bit. For this natural PLA, the flow corresponding to the last well-printed layer is once again 14.3 cubic millimeter per second, just as we've seen before in the previous test. I'll talk about the issues I had to find filament with consistent properties later on, but for now let's address the question of how to establish the maximum printable flow. In the previous video, I've tried to confirm the maximum printable flow by taking a close look at the print quality of the layers until some defects would show up. 
The corresponding flow was then recorded on the chart. Although this method provided quite consistent results, I still felt it was based on subjective observations. It would be easy to argue on what exactly is a defect. Somebody else would probably have a different opinion. Will I even myself be consistent in my approach over time? Many of your comments were going in that direction as well. So how can we establish a consistent decision factor to impartially separate what is a good print from a bad print? I went back to the data and tried to see if I could establish a constant that would allow us to have an objective and repeatable manner of defining the maximum printable flow. Defining this transition point using data only is not as obvious as I thought. This graph here shows a chronological progression of a few values during a printing test run using the same pattern as before done at 230 degrees Celsius. We can see on this graph the recorded pressure, the requested flow, and the obtained flow. The pink curve is showing the deviation between the requested and the obtained flows. This is all good data. We can estimate where the breakpoint will be, but how to precisely confirm it? Will it actually print until that point? How much under extrusion can this PLA, at this temperature, at this layer height and width, can tolerate before producing bad quality extrusion? I don't think we will get a definitive answer applicable to all print conditions and all materials, but I would like to establish a maximum extrusion deviation value that we will use as a start. Let's bring back the previous methodology and try to match the breakpoint on that curve. So at 230 degrees Celsius on this PLA, we can see that the measured flow curve is starting to stall at around 15.5 cubic millimeter per second. This corresponds to about 7% deviation in extrusion. If we look at the print produced from this run, we can count 25 layers that printed well. And then at the 26th, there are some artifacts showing up. According to the data, the last layer that printed correctly on that model was averaging a flow of 13.4 cubic millimeter per second. This is pretty far from the 15.5 the curve seems to indicate over here. On that measured extrusion curve at 13.4 cubic millimeter per second, there is not much telling us that we could be in trouble trying to print at that value. The pressure is about to creep, but nothing serious. So, data-wise, how do we get the warning signal that this is too much? How can we see on those curves that it won't print anymore? By looking at the shift points, where pressure is creeping, flow is stalling, and deviation is increasing more rapidly, perhaps we could see something. So I mapped the shift points for all temperature values and obtained this very interesting graph. We can see the points where flow is stalling for each temperature then the points where pressure is creeping. There is, of course, a clear and direct relationship between those two values. One very stunning behavior is how stable the creeping points for the flow deviation percentages are. See how consistent is that value as we increase in temperature and flow. Let's add the maximum flow of the last printed layer to this graph and also let's add its corresponding flow deviation percentage. Wow! I think we are onto something. Lower temperature numbers are a bit erratic and I have a few hypotheses on why is that. But look how stable it gets as we increase in temperature. We could almost draw a line at 5.75% extrusion deviation and call it a day for this configuration. We are definitely looking at this story the right way but how to precisely trace the line between good and bad for all combination of filaments and nozzle sizes. A lot of work will be required to confirm if this 5.75% extrusion deviation limit is what we should use. I will stick for now with the visual observation and keep track of the evolution from this theoretical limit as we go on during the Olympics. So, how different are the results from this test, which was printed, compared to what we had previously done on the mid-air extrusion test rig. The answer is unfortunately very different. And the main reason for that is the fact that I could not get my hand on the same type of natural PLA filament that I've used in the previous testing. The maximum printable flow of this olive green filament from this same brand is quite lower, unfortunately. 
Comparing the two filaments at 220 degrees Celsius on this chart clearly shows the difference in the properties. I am currently discussing with a well-known filament manufacturer to bring stability and reliability in these tests. I will keep you guys posted on this. This project has been truffled with many roadblocks, each requiring some thinking, problem solving, but most of the time revealing phenomena and aspects that I would never have thought of. Because there is so much to share, I would like to give you the opportunity to get access to more of this data and also at a faster rate than what I am able to publish on YouTube. I invite you to become a Patreon by visiting the link in the video description. So back to our data. Apart from the lower flow performance of this filament, the results behavior are pretty to the par of what we have observed previously. The curves are a bit more erratic due to the printing motion, but I think this is still going to do it. I have not done the test for PETG and ABS yet with that new printing methodology, since the data crunching was a lot more demanding on my PC and also Excel might not be the appropriate tool anymore, so therefore I'm giving a look to the R project for statistical computing. The key to my solution might be in there. Just like you, I am eager to see what all of these hot ends have to give. But we need to secure the testing methodology very precisely first. I can now say that we have a plan, a pretty solid one. Once the new filament comes in, we can start for real. I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you for your patience. See you next time on another episode of the Hot End Olympics.